Jonathan Hung, uh, the Executive Director here with the Office of Space Technology and Industry in Singapore. Thanks for joining us again on Australian Space TV. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Uh, and great to have you on. You've got a new role, uh, Executive Director, but you should be all warmed up now. Uh, you've had the position for a while. Yes, yes. Uh, it's been a while, I mean uh, about 10, 11 months or so. Okay, almost a year, it almost yeah. feels like a decade. Great. Yeah. <laughs> well look, we've taken the opportunity, we've got uh, the Indo-Pacific Space and Earth Conference coming up in Perth in November, yes. uh, alongside the APRSAT, the Asia-Pacific Regional Space Agency Forum. Uh, so we understand uh, you'll have a representation uh, coming down, but I think it's a good opportunity to get an overview, now that you've got a bit of a, a new view uh, on uh, Austin uh, with the new role, and just some of the key priorities or, or uh, the roadmap that you've got as well. Um, but maybe introduce us to, to Austin. No, thank you, Chris. Um, so the Austin Office for Space Technology and Industry uh, really represents Singapore in all aspects of space. Um, we do cover uh, elements in technology, uh, industry, uh, government affairs and government relations. Um, essentially all the key ingredients towards running a national space uh, effort here in Singapore. Uh, we are quite sized up to support uh, Singapore, uh, to support our, a lot of our research and development activities. Uh, we, ha we do have a research roadmap um, and that encompasses our entire technology community, uh, universities, research institutes and the like. Uh, and that also heavily supports our industrial engagements. Um, the Office for Space Technology Industry, or Austin for short, uh, supports also the industry development activities uh, across the board. Uh, and that spectrum covers uh, about 60 or so space companies here in Singapore and about 2,000 or so space professionals. Yeah. Um, the growth of this, I think, has uh, been pretty strong over the past decade or so. Uh, and we are keen to do more, I think, with our local players. Uh, but we also invite a lot of our foreign partners and um, industrial um, ecosystem to, to come together and uh, explore Singapore as a place to, to, to do prototyping, um, to test bit their new technologies and to work with our companies as well. The last piece really is to make sure that we are uh, well represented international fora. Um, we're not too new in space, uh, but we certainly want to ensure we conform to international norms. Uh, do our part, uh, not just at the international uh, platforms, but also within the Asia-Pacific, ASEAN platforms yeah. as well. Um, and these are a few areas that we are very keen to double down on and um, increase our collaborative partnerships as well. well. I think it's one of those things, being a, a smaller country, but also a regional hub, do you find, and 60, compa uh, 60 companies isn't too bad either, and I think yeah. they, from our uh, insights, is they cover all aspects of, of the space domain yes. uh, as well. Um, but yeah, what are some of the key strengths there that you think that Singapore has? Obviously being a regional hub, uh, touches into financial markets as well and the VC sector. But yeah, do you find that that, that requires a, a, a unique strategy for Singapore as to where you find yourselves in a global space domain? So, uh, no, good question, Chris. So actually we are quite fortunate actually. we. Um, the sector in itself may be, you know, it's a, it's a growing sector for Singapore, but over the years I think we have built up the key ingredients around having a successful space ecosystem. Um, a touch on aerospace being one of them. I mean, uh, Singapore does have a very vibrant um, aviation and aerospace community and industrial ecosystem. Uh, that I think is a natural extension. Uh, well, space is a natural extension for um, from aerospace. Yeah. So having a, a good talented workforce to support that uh, in engineering, um, in core research expertise, that I think has been built up over a couple of decades now. Uh, and that has allowed us to, in a way, uh, catalyze our space sector in a structured manner. Uh, the electronic sector in Singapore is also pretty strong. Uh, these are, I think, that, that in itself is a key pillar to many of the fundamental core sectors in, uh, in Singapore today. Um, and that coupled with a very strong um, infocoms and media uh, or infocoms uh, sector for connectivity is also largely something that we feel is important as we touch on the key thematic areas of space. Um, having precision engineering capability is also important. Uh, this also forms a, a core a fundamental, I think, of a lot of our satellite building, um, a lot of our satellite uh, manufacturing uh, uh, efforts as well. So these key, I guess, in four ingredients has given us some legs to stand on, I think, to start off with, uh, and has allowed us to take our space economy forward um, I guess in a more structured manner. Yeah, I think maybe on the, the satellite side, you had seven satellites launched last year with India, 
and I think I read there's some 15 or so satellites launched uh, since 2011, uh, if I've got those numbers right. Um, yeah, but what's the, the sort of satellite manufacturing uh, that you've got in the pipeline? Do you get, have that insights into how active the industry actually is uh, in, that, in that area? Um, so yes, uh, so actually we had uh, nine, I think, launched uh, last year from India okay. uh, and, and three before that. Um, these were a lot of precursor missions, uh, some of them uh, very novel demonstrators as well. Uh, in 2022, for example, we, wa we launched our first uh, polarimetric uh, SAR satellite and believe that was also a major pathfinder for a lot of efforts in the SAR domain. Um, similarly, in 2023, we had a mixed bag of um, research satellites uh, and some commercial satellites that were also sent out. Uh, and yes, since I think, uh, well, we go back, let's say, a decade or so, I think today we have about 30 or so satellites out Got the it. door. So yes, not, not pretty far off the mark. And hopefully in the next uh, uh, five, ten years as well, that cadence will continue to grow. And we are pretty sure it will with what we have seen at least in the roadmap. You do have your own national satellite? Uh, we have correct? our own um, satellites that have been sent out via universities. Uh, so many of the early precursors uh, are, bo are from our Nanyang Technological University as well as our National University of Singapore. Right, so actually the large uh, base of satellites that we have seen out the door, as I mentioned earlier, have been research-centric and largely from our universities. The commercial ones have been from uh, our commercial entity, Singapore Technologies. Yep. So Singapore Technologies has sent out uh, Talos 1 and Talos 2. The first one was optical, second was a SAR. Uh, commercial uh, programs and actually we are quite happy to share that they have gained commercial traction as well. Uh, so much so that they don't just provide the, the raw data. Uh, SD also has uh, an, an entity called SD Geo Insights that does the analytics as well, which is actually to me also a very, very major component of the space value chain. So we do look at all the three elements of space. You know, we look at remote sensing, communications and GNSS uh, and we try to dovetail as much activities and provide strong analytics you know as actual outcomes for potential end users yeah. as well. And how active do you find that uh, in the region Southeast Asia as well sort of the relationships with Singapore do you find even from either workforce development or research uh, touch points yeah, how active would you say uh, in terms of I often see Singapore as a regional leader, regional hub within Southeast Asia. Do you find it has that position in space or do you find it's a bit more dis disparate uh, in, in space? I think it's similar. Uh, I think Singapore's strengths as a convening hub, um, as a, again, a very pro-business environment for, and we welcome anyone and everyone, I think, to test bid with us, uh, remains the same and it applies certainly to the space domain. Uh, we do have uh, platforms today that uh, Austin and also our partners regularly uh, organise to convene our ASEAN friends, uh, something that we also do at other international fora as well. Uh, we want to try and support, I think, our entire, let's say, Asia-Pacific uh, community in the area of research, um, catalyzing new ideas. Uh, Austin also supports an area uh, quite critical, which is in the area of innovation and young companies as well. Yeah. Uh, so that I think today is quite um, uh, well amplified through new space activities. And uh, we see a lot of these young companies coming through our door, both local companies, uh, but certainly it's very interesting to see foreign uh, young companies as well come through our door. Leveraging, I think, Singapore more to access the Asia market. So it's not everything all for Singapore itself, but I think through Singapore for the wider Asia market. I think having a landing point here allows them to have these conversations, uh, hopefully easily, and they can also leverage on our technology ecosystem also to jumpstart the activities. And I think Austin here is really set up to support these uh, young uh, players uh, through their journey. Yeah. Great. Um, the, the UK has been uh, sort of a lead uh, country <laughs> for GSTC for the last couple of years and we've got the Australia UK Space Bridge as mm. well. Uh, sort of any insights there to what Singapore is doing with the UK uh, and developing that, that relationship via Singapore and, and particularly again I, I have the, a lens on with you being with Austin now rather than uh, your former role. No I think we, we continue to nurture that. Uh, I think the UK uh, um, presence I think at both the convention as well as on the ground, you know, with our company. So what, one of the spin-offs of that has been quite successful is the B2B engagements. We we highly encourage and of course certainly if we don't have to have any intervention, I see that as actually that's the largest litmus test of it being a success. 
um, we have seen companies come together. We support both ends of the spectrum uh, on R&D projects. Um, but certainly we continue to nurture that. And um, we also see that important because it's a two-way approach. The companies or research partners come through uh, Singapore again to, to access Asia's market. Um, and in our companies here, Singapore companies or Singapore-based you know, players from the region can cross over as well to access the wider European market, yeah. which is quite critical as well for us. So this bridge actually is very, very useful. And of course, when I cover Asia-Pacific, it also includes Australia as well. Yeah. And what are the key strategies for uh, you going forward? Uh, sustainability, uh, there's been a number of statements made uh, by Austin uh, in the international arena. Yeah, what's sort of impo important uh, from Singapore's perspective on the international stage? Sustainability being one, uh, and, and any others there? Um, so that's a key one. So sustainability, and it's broken down into a few sub-areas. You know, we have uh, climate change, uh, we have uh, food resiliency, uh, carbon monitoring. I mean, the key th topics today that we feel uh, our satellite technologies can contribute to, that's, that's number one. The other thematic area is in connectivity. So connectivity, which touched a lot on comms that we spoke about earlier, and that includes um, aviation uh, comm, aviation, commun uh, aviation communications, uh, maritime comms, um, and not anything to do with non-terrestrial networks. And we're looking at uh, quantum communications, for example. Uh, that's another area of growth that we see. We are seeding a lot of research support in as well. So the connecti connectivity layer cuts across quite a few fields, and it's something that we're driving very heavily. Nice. What's your sort of call to action uh, from an audience perspective? Is it uh, either business uh, or research, but also you have a regulatory uh, function here as well. Is uh, What's your main body of work, I suppose, at the moment and, uh, and a call to action for from an audience perspective? I think all three. We certainly want to double down on all three areas, uh, but we are, we are open for business. Uh, we are your one-stop shop um, for anything and everything to do with space. Uh, Singapore welcomes all partners and players uh, to, to explore how we can be a, a clear partner to support your activities, uh, both from a commercialization point of view, but certainly we are happy to catalyze new ideas and ideate uh, uh, new innovations with you. Wonderful. Well, Jonathan Hong, Executive Director with the Office of Space Technology and Industry here in Singapore, thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you, Chris. In your new role Thank uh, you. on Australia and Space TV. Thank you very much.